Hello, my dear students. So today's explanation is on chapter seven, religious debates and regional cultures. So in this chapter, we will find out the belief system and development of the syncretic cults in medieval period, and also we will try to learn about the movement that took place in South India and North India. and we will also develop an understanding uh, of the evolution of painting music and dance form of this period so let's start in introduction of medieval period we can say that the medieval period in india was to open a new chapter in the history of the religious development and it marked by the appearance of new cults and the transformation of the pre-existing religions okay and on the other hand a new religious belief uh, and cults arose like a sikhism or bhakti movement and sufism and in other way we can say that, that there were efforts to reform the caste based rift and this hinduism and uh, saints and reformers like kabir nanak and mirabai they preached the concept like oneness of god okay and equality among human beings they believe that all human beings were equal and there is a oneness of god and this made people see things in a different light okay and also shaped the way people thought and all this led to far reaching changes in the society which till then was dominated by the uh, rigid caste system and the inequalities based on it Next, we have belief system and the syncretic cults during the medieval period, and that that is bhakti movement. Bhakti movement. Okay, this concept of bhakti or uh, devotion to God was not a new concept in Hinduism. Okay, we all know what bhakti is. So it finds mention uh, in the holy scripture of the Purans and the Upanishads and like the Bhagavad Gita. written in the earlier centuries of the christian era okay and there is also a mention of the three uh, margas or we can say paths uh, or way for attainment of the moksha moksha means salvation so namely the these three were like a gyan uh, marga or we can say path of knowledge or dharma marga we can say the path of duty and the bhakti marga means path of devotion so this bhakti emphasizes aspect like equality irrespective of caste creed color etc and virtues of kindness of heart and mind devotion to one god okay and freedom from all kinds of ritualisms than uh, and preachings in the language of the common people the next we have is manners and avars so okay around the early um, medieval period this bhakti cult arose in south india and uh, uh, from there it is spread to the north india so the greatest uh, propens of bhakti in south india were the manners and they worship lord shiva manners they worship lord shiva and the avars they worship lord vishnu so the manners and the avars they emphasized a don't love for shiva and vishnu as it means of attainment of salvation so like uh, around 12 avars and uh, 63 manners they had started this movement 12 avars and 63 manners they have started the movement and they started this movement in the tamil so all of them come from different background like Porters, traders, untouchable person also, Brahmins also, and the locals um, say also. So some of the popular saint of this group were like a uh, what were their name? A Par, then Sambandar, then Periyalar, then uh, Namalvar. Okay. Next is important of Bhakti saint. So by the 13th century, the Bhakti movement had started making. in the roads of the north and which was uh, witnessing major social and religious changes under the influence of hinduism and islam and sufism so with the rise of towns and trade 
this new social groups were gaining importance okay so most of the bhakti fans they come uh, they follow their followers come from the various social and caste backgrounds so including like the uh, farmers peasants artisans weavers brahmans also okay so some of the important bhakti fans were here you know, like uh, ramananda okay so ramananda was a follower of ramanuja so he was born in alabad in a brahman family okay i think most of you have heard this name ramananda okay and also worship he worship lord vishnu so he was the first reformer to preach in hindi okay next is chaitanya so chaitanya uh, chaitanya was an like a ardent devotee of lord krishna okay and who popularized bhakti in bengal or assam and odisha so he and his followers were credited to have composed many songs in praise of lord krishna and uh, the song during the kirtan also then is mirabai hmm, you heard this name yes mirabai so mirabai was a rajput princess okay and uh, she married a royal family of mewar so she was a great devotee of lord krishna since her childhood okay and she uh, composed several hymns in praise of krishna which are properly known as miras bhajan okay next is surdas surdas yes so uh, surdas was also a devotee of lord krishna and he was born blind okay that's why he is called a surda sur means the person who cannot see okay so he was born uh, blind so he composed many dohas or we can say couplets okay so which become very popular and his po- uh, poems are compiled in the sur sagar next is tulsi das then tulsi das was a devotee of lord rama okay and he also composed several dohas and this tulsi das he wrote the ram charitra manas and hanuman chalisa okay then next we have is sufism and its teaching so see this after the muslim they conquered uh, of north in northern india the sufis began to pour into the country okay and the islam also represented by the sufis so they appealed uh, to the people of india this sufism is also known as the islamic islamic um, mysticism okay so it was considered as a reform movement within islam so the sufis were uh, often not like by the orthodox or like ulema okay so as they did not abide by the codes and the behavior prescribed by the islamic law okay and this another reason was that the sufis love for music okay other muslim they don't uh, prefer to listen music but the sufis they love for music and dance as a means of reaching god okay which was deeply objected by the orthodox ulema okay and this term sufi is an arabic word and it means ul okay ul as a sufi they call it ulen garment okay so they derive their teaching from the hadith okay like uh, from the quran or like the it is saying of or like a prophet muhammad okay then next we have orders of the sufis see the sufis were um, in orders into um, orders or like a silsila each one was identified the prominent or like saint who lived in the khanaka khanaka means the uh, hermitage okay so along with his murids or disciples a lot of emphasis was laid on the peer murid relationship so as a means of reach god so often this khana khas become the hub of religious discourses okay so these sufis of each silsila they guarded their traditional jealously okay the next we have important of sufi saints 
so see this the founder of um, like uh, kisti silsila was khwaja and he was khwaja muhiddin kisti so he was one of the better known um, sufi saint he is associated with the city of ajmer okay and also this is followed held gathering when some of the finest form of music will be heard like qawali become important forms of music with the sufis okay then next we have follow uh, flowering of regional culture so see uh, during the medieval period we saw the flowering of the composite culture so it was mainly due to two reason the first was coming of the turks afghans and persians to india and which led to intermingling of the cultures okay and the second was rise of bhaktism so bhaktism this between the 8th to 15th century yeah. 8th to 15th century the bhakti saint they preached in the language of common people and they traveled all over the country and this brought regional language and cultures to prominence then next we have is development of language and literature see uh, sanskrit always remain the language of the elite okay and that's the language of the core too so the common common people used pali and uh, prakrit yes as a medium of communication at that time okay so many literary works were composed in this period so somdev wrote like on the katha sarita sagar a collection of stories and legends okay then uh, this one on the finest work in poetry in sanskrit of this period is a gita govinda gita govinda by jayadeva who was a court poet of the lakshmana sena of bengal okay and it was translated in english for the first time by sir william jones in uh, 1972 okay so the art of writing biographies of rulers was popularized during this period this this in medieval period okay and bilhana's like vikramadeva uh, charita is a biography of the chalukyan king vikramaditya so this the coming of um, like in early medieval period we saw the appearance of the apabhrashana dialects and it developed during the period of spanning between the 6th and the 15th century so in the south india this kamban they wrote the tamil version of the ramayana okay and this ramayana around the 13th century they wrote so originally malayalam was no more than a local dialect of pure tamil okay so the earliest record of the language is an inscription that dated to approximately 830 so the emerge growth, uh, growth of language they continued for the first time for the delhi sultan but it was given its impetus under the mughal so as they were great patrons of literature okay then next we have development of painting see this painting it had been an important form of expression for from times immemorial okay like uh, earlier human they express their feelings through paintings on the wall of caves okay like in india painting is a very old tradition and the ancient texts they outline the theories of color and like aesthetics and the anecdotal accounts they suggest that it was not uncommon for household to paint their doorway or to even indoor room uh, where they started it so this cave paintings from ajanta or like bag or sita vansal or temple paintings this testify to a love of naturalism so both in the, um, depiction and uh, of the human form and in the depiction of the nature so the mughal they were the great patrons of art and the mughal school of painting they originated during the reign of akbar okay and akbar was Clearly, they interested in the art of painting and architecture. Okay, so at the beginning of his reign, a studio of painting was set up, and it was set up under the supervision of two person master, Mir Syed Ali and Abdul Samad Khan. 
then next we have is music and dance so this is uh, in medieval period it witnessed a great development in music okay and music was not a part of the original islamic tradition but it developed under the influence of sufis and become a part of court life so the bhakti and sufi tradition of the medieval period involved the divine through the music and dance okay and the contribution of the bhakti and sufi sense of the development the growth of indian classical music music has been a major force of india's culture unity so apart from the hindu elements some of the greatest masters of music have been muslim and the this kitab in nauras a collection of song in praise of hindu deities and muslim sense were written by the 17th century ruler ibrahim adil sa to okay and this both the like a vocal instrument music to main classical style they bought hindustani and the carnatic so the music of north india is also known as hindustani music okay and it was largely influenced by the persian music and carnatic music it developed in south india under the vidyanagar and the chola rulers so some of the greatest figures in carnatic music were purandar dasha and uh, thyagraj and muthu swami then dikshitar or the swayamas sastri okay so the work of uh, matanga and bidha desi is the first to mention the word raga so the other notable features during this period was a gradual development of the art of music as an independent form and it breaking away from being a overly dependent on forms of dance and drama then like a um, the tevarams which was song in praise of lord shiva was more than 20 scales in tamil nadu okay which are equivalent to the present system of carnatic music so uh, in the monumental work of the medieval period in sanskrit it consists of 24 songs and is set to a particular rag, rag independently okay then next we have is dance see India dance has also developed a rich classical tradition. It has become a medium of expression of emotions, of telling a story and of drama. So the story of Indian dance can be seen in the temple. Okay, temple sculptures of ancient and medieval times. So dance began as a part of temple culture with the Devadasis. performing in temple as a part of um, reverence to god so when rulers they began to patronize dance it developed as an independent art form so some styles of classical dance that have evolved from this period are like kathakali um, in kerala and uh, kuchipudi and bharatnatyam in tamil nadu kathak in north india manipuri in eastern india then during the cholas uh, or bharatnatyam was well accepted dance from uh, dance form of florist so in the medieval period the status of the dasis they is reached to its peak okay so their status dependent on the rise and fall of the temples okay so like the early medieval period so the rise and spread of the bhakti movement was in south india and then north india and then then uh, we learn about here hindustani classical music it flourished in north india under the moguls then we learn here about the urdu is a mixture of persian and uh, hindi okay so this is all about chapter 7 religious debates and regional cultures thank you